Good afternoon. Uh, my talk is the last talk uh, in this conference. And uh, I would like to say that uh, this conference was greatly organized. And uh, uh, my uh, special thanks to local organizing committee, in particular to Lena Gryazeva and Pavel Cherbakov, uh, who uh, uh, did fantastic uh, uh, job. Uh, and I think uh, all of us should be happy to be in this wonderful place and enjoy such a hospitality. Uh, then this talk uh, is uh, related to some modern version of control theory. And of course, it's a uh, tribute to uh, Boris Pollack. And uh, as we all know, Boris uh, made a fundamental contribution uh, to optimal control uh, starting from early years. And he is still uh, interested in control, of course, as we know. Then it is really a tribute to my dear friend, uh, uh, Boris Teodorovich Polik. Uh, what we are going to, con this uh, particular uh, talk is a uh, joint paper with my student, uh, Tan Ga Kao. Uh, but actually, uh, this topics we started a couple of years ago uh, uh, with an international group uh, involving uh, different people. And I am proud to be a part of this group. And this uh, particular uh, talk is devoted to uh, some version of uh, so-called sweeping process or Moreau process. Then, uh, what do we mean by sweeping process? Uh, sweeping process uh, was introduced by Jean-Jacques Moreau, and uh, probably everybody knows this name. He is one of the founders of convex analysis. Uh, and uh, uh, this topic, uh, this uh, process was introduced by Moreau uh, in the uh, you know, late 60s, early 70s, uh, being motivated by uh, mechanical applications. Actually, Moreau, uh, he, he died uh, last year in his 19s. Moreau actually never considered himself to be a mathematician. It was a joke, of course. And he considered to be an expert in mechanics. And uh, everything what he has done uh, was devoted to some mechanical problems uh, uh, in infinite dimension, in fact, in Hilbert space. Uh, but this uh, sweeping process, which uh, under consideration, is uh, driven by uh, differential inclusion. Uh, here, n uh, is a normal cone. Uh, to a convex set. C of t is a convex set, but what's so-called moving set. Then t, s depends on t in a nice way, Lipschitz way or absolute continuous way. And we consider normal cone mapping at the point x of t uh, to, a mo to the moving set uh, uh, C of t with some cachet uh, problem here. Uh, that's exactly formulation of Jean-Jacques Jean Moreau. And because uh, set C is convex, uh, we can write down this uh, process as uh, variational inequality. That's what uh, best known formulation of the sweeping process. Uh, and we can consider this process as differential inclusion. Then, uh, if you would like to optimize uh, this uh, sweeping trajectory, that's a good question. Never been are uh, uh, posted uh, till uh, recent years. And what is the reason? The reason is that this particular Cauchy problem, uh, in generality, has a unique solution. There is nothing to optimize, and of course no control. It's not an optimization problem. It's a problem of evolution, uh, as given here. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, there are uh, indeed interesting problems which uh, are good for optimization, to find optimum parameters and something. But it is not the case here. Then, uh, our idea was to uh, involve control, to get involved control in this formulation and uh, make a set a C of T depending on the control parameter. Then, use some kind of control parameterization uh, of this set. And in this way, uh, we can uh, control the problem, and we can minimize something. Then formulate problem as optimal control problem for a differential inclusion. But uh, here, of course, we will have some, uh, uh, some, uh, some, some troubles. Uh, and uh, uh, no classical theory, uh, to the best of our knowledge, can be applied to this situation. And I will discuss uh, this more. Then uh, regarding uh, motivation and regarding application, there are indeed a lot of applications of sweeping process, including control sweeping process, 
to many topics in particular to hysteresis, uh, which actually uh, uh, this topic has been celebrated in Institute of Control Problems, in particular uh, Krasnosevsky, his lab, and this indeed, uh, I, I, I don't know how it's called in Russia, uh, the sweeping problem, Moreau process, that sweeping, because many people ask me what means sweeping process. This is original name uh, uh, given by Moreau, but in Russia it's probably known as Moreau process or something like that. But it's much related to hysteresis. I will talk about it, and I will discuss some problem of application not related to hysteresis, but related to some uh, kind of uh, uh, social economic model. That's what's the situation. So far we consider sweeping process when C of T is a moving set, but the, when this set is a fixed set, as was in uh, uh, conventional theory of uh, the sweeping process. Then the question about existence, uniqueness, and some kind of uh, numerical issues, but not about optimization. Then, considering optimization, let's do the following. Uh, let's consider this particular model when C of T is controlled. Then, uh, in this model, uh, we have fixed uh, set uh, uh, C without T, uh, just the set C, and let's consider polyhedral description. Then set C is fixed uh, and is uh, you know, uh, given by this polyhedral. But then, uh, besides that fixed set C, we put some control parameter, U of T. In fact, this particular model is known like a play and stop operator. And if people are familiar with hysteresis, for example, play and stop operator, it's very typical description of a problem uh, of hysteresis and many other problems. Then having this control, we introduce, first of all, we have constraints here, and then uh, from physical consideration, and of course mathematically also of, of interest, we consider a situation where control U is separated from zero. That we can put that norm of control just equal to one for all T. Uh, then, now, when we use this control uh, under constraints and plug control into this uh, C of T, then, uh, then, we have, uh, then we have problem uh, which depend on control, and we can use control to minimize something. And let's consider mathematical formulation, we minimize this kind of a bolsa functional. In this case, we have this Meyer part, terminal part, when capital T is a fixed uh, uh, terminal time, and we have a running cost, which depends on X, U, B also control. I, I, I did mention that we have this perturbation, then B another part of control, which perturbs this uh, right-hand side of the differential inclusion. But U is a part of control which perturbs C. Uh, in this case, we consider this uh, uh, running cost depending on X, U, and B, we treat X as a trajectory, U and B is a control function, and depending on uh, the velocities. Uh, that's the problem under consideration. And regarding feasible controls, we understand here absolute continuous function. U of T and B of T are not measurable or piecewise continuous, but absolutely continuous function. And indeed, this corresponds to mathematical uh, description and also to some applied problems. Then what we have this particular optimal control problem given like that. Then looking at this problem, uh, you know, let me uh, make some more remarks here. Uh, you know, this is very much uh, interrelated to the previous slide. Uh, then uh, what kind of remarks? Because uh, we describe uh, sweeping process in terms of this differential inclusion, it is not a standard differential inclusion because C of T is changeable. We don't have differential inclusion like consider in control uh, theory. X of dot uh, uh, of T, F da, X dot of T, at derivative of T belongs to some fixed set F. This indeed comes from control theory, actually. Was initiated in Russia, as we know, then has been developed uh, much uh, uh, in the world, and now it's more or less developed theory. Uh, here is the different situation because we have change of shape. When here uh, we have this control, and control also here, our right-hand side of the differential inclusion uh, is uh, like shape optimization. That's first observation. Then here we have intrinsic state constraints. Because we know normal contour convex analysis is empty when the, the point doesn't belong to the set. But here it's not empty. But of course price to pay, then x of t should belong to C of t but C of T depending on this 
parameter, then we have state constraints, intrinsic state constraints. Then we have state constraints of this type. One, I'm talking of state constraints because we will later consider reduction to problem when U can be treated and B can be treated as uh, some state variable as well. Then in this case, observe also uh, in this formulation, then here we have not only inequality type state constraints given by polyhedral uh, uh, description, but also equality type. And as far as I know, equality type state constraints for OT, they actually uh, never have been considered even in standard control theory, what I'm familiar with, with uh, recent uh, development by uh, Arama Rutunov and, uh, uh, and his team uh, who consider a problem with state constraints in standard formulation with equality state constraints under heavily regularity assumption. The smoothness is not uh, the issue, but uh, the issue is uh, very strong regularity. Okay, then uh, we have such a problem. Then the first issue, uh, the first question is about existence of feasible solutions. And we formulate this uh, problem uh, in the class of absolutely continuous uh, uh, arcs. Uh, actually, Lipschitzian type, uh, which usually under consideration the sweeping theory, is not the case here. But we can prove existence of absolutely continuous trajectory. Then, you know, the uh, you know, first line to get existence to make sure that this problem is uh, uh, well posed from the viewpoint of uh, uh, standard uh, uh, sweeping theory. Then, uh, as I mentioned, we have such a situation when our error works, uh, our right hand side uh, given like that and depends on control here when C of T is uh, controllable and depends on control B in, in the perturbation. Then we have such a situation, then when we have uh, uh, given controls U and B, we have some trajectory as we prove, then we have well posed mathematical problem and we have something to minimize. Uh, then, uh, uh, what else? Uh, again, this problem is given in uh, very non-standard form, but we can reduce uh, by reformulation this problem in more a uh, convention form of the theory of differential inclusion. When we consider uh, this Z as triple X, U, and B, uh, and we treat this triple as state, uh, 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 a state variable, state variable here, we have initial condition, and this problem can be formulated in such a form. When we minimize some functional j of z now, with this running cost, when z and its derivatives here, but we have such a differential inclusion. And this differential inclusion has some special issues which have never been considered in uh, uh, control theory for differential inclusions. What about issue? We have unboundedness. It's not only because here are n, but because f is normal cone, never bounded. But the most essential part, we have, uh, we have non a Lipschitzian situation, heavily non Lipschitzian situation, because normal cone mapping, subdifferential mapping, is never Lipschitz continuous. It is discontinuous. Then, any, any idea about Lipschitz continuity, which is very essential in all approaches to differential inclusions, they, you know, they do not work uh, from our viewpoint. But we need to face this problem. That heavily non Lipschitzian problem with unbounded. Uh, uh, right hand side G now and with state constraints. And now we have state constraints of inequality type, which comes from the normal cone, and we have state constraints of equality type. That's very, very essential parts of the problem. Then indeed, uh, question what to do. As far as I uh, understand, this methods of variations and any modification of methods of variation is not applicable here. Actually, uh, this uh, uh, idea which you know, calculus variation, this idea of uh, Lagrange and uh, earlier, uh, uh, you know, gave this name calculus variation because of variation. Uh, but this idea, uh, uh, you know, uh, actually, I don't know how to apply it in any way. But uh, what could be applied here? This is original idea of Euler. Euler used this what called finite difference methods. This is Euler original idea, which was even before Lagrange. What Euler did? He considered, of course, simplest problem without any dynamic constraints, just minimizing, of course, function, uh, running cost, and then uh, he used discretization. And he used discretization not from numerical viewpoint, like now people treat this earlier finite difference methods and, and various uh, extensions like runge kut and something. Euler used this to prove what is now called Euler or Euler-Lagrange equation. That was fundamental idea of Euler. 
uh, actually not, nothing has been proved because, you know, if you are familiar with the original paper of Euler, it's a very small paper, not small, little paper, but of course great. Uh, Euler, you know, just put some figures, like look at here, look at there, broken line, then we can guess that if it's a so, so small, this discretization, we, we can get this equation. That's what Euler equation comes. Here, we try to use this method of discrete approximation as a vehicle to derive necessary optimality condition. And here is a uh, situation that we consider discretization of the problem and discretization of the derivative. We have derivative uh, of z. Again, uh, that is derivative. Mechanical, uh, you know, people are familiar with this. Uh, derivative with respect to t. Then we discretize this and we have some sequences of discrete time problems. With state constraints, with all the stuff here, only instead of differential inclusion, we consider discrete inc disc uh, inclusion. Uh, then, uh, in, this case, uh, or in this case, of course, the issue about well postness as well. Do we have stability? Do we have convergence of optimal solution uh, of discrete problem? First of all, do they exist? And do we have convergence and in which sense? And here we have such uh, result, first result here, without any optimization, just about discretization of any fixed uh, feasible uh, solution, not optimal, Z uh, bar, it is a feasible solution. We consider Euler uh, finite difference, uh, we consider here discretization, then we replace our uh, differential inclusion replaced by these sequences of uh, finite difference inclusions, this discrete mesh. Uh, here, uh, velocity, discrete velocity belongs to this F. And then uh, we have, of course, keep state constraints, keep everything there, and discretize uh, differential inclusions. Then we have convergence. And convergence actually in proper sense. Uh, we have uh, W12 convergence. We have convergence uh, not only trajectories, but velocity as well. And it's a very essential part about uh, well postness of discrete approximation here. Uh, proof is involved uh, because we don't have Lipschitz condition. I've been involved in discrete approximation methods, you know, for a long time. But Lipschitz conditions are very essential there. Then we, we play with this Lipschitz constant. Here we don't have Lipschitz constant. That we need to do something different. And in fact, we can uh, do this here. We can get even some better estimate, velocity estimate, a rate of convergence. Everything is here. Then we can consider this as the numerical part, because we consider this approximation and then we can stop in any uh, in a step of discretization and say, okay, just solve this discrete problem and it is well post problem, because we do have convergence in a proper sense. Okay, then we have this issue, then now let's consider a discretization of the whole Bolsa problem. And in this case, we have such a situation. We keep differential, uh, discrete inclusion, this is discrete inclusion, we keep state constraints, as here, but instead of the original uh, balls of tag function, we consider discrete approximation. And in this case, I would like to mention that Z bar uh, of T, it is a fixed optimal solution, actually local minima, here, it's a local minimum in some intermediate sense, not strong, not uh, weak, but in between, uh, in particular strong uh, minima. We have this guy, and we would like to get a necessary condition for this given optimal solution. We don't use any variation as usual, uh, as, as kind of conventional, but we use indeed this problem of mathematical programming. If you look at this problem under fixed yeah. Uh, step, we have problem of mathematical programming. And in this problem, of course, very special problem. Even without any, uh, you know, with smoothness, everything we can assume, all the stuff smooth. But first of all, we do have intrinsic non-smoothness here because this geometric constraints. Uh, and uh, when f is convex valued, the whole guy is not convex. We have many geometric constraints, actually increasing number of geometric constraints. We have here state constraints. Of course, the main part is here. That's what creates all troubles here. We don't have any Lipschitz. So this guy may be smooth, maybe non-smooth. We can do for non-smoothness. I don't want to emphasize non-smoothness here of the data. Data are smooth just for simplicity. But we have such a problem uh, for this zk. k is fixed, but then we can push k to infinity. And we would like to get, first of all, optimality condition for this problem, and then to justify convergence, which is really the most difficult part and get something uh, uh, at the end. 
Then, uh, first of all, the question about existence of this optimal solution. Here, we cannot assume this existence because if in discrete problems we don't have optimal solution, nothing to do. It is not something like we do in optimality condition. Let uh, Z bar be optimal solution. Then we have such and such condition, like in maximum principle. Here, it's a different issue. We need to prove existence. And although all variables are final, uh, we, it's not trivial situation because we have here unbounded normal con mapping. And then to prove existence, we use a Touche theorem about uh, convergence uh, of subdifferential of convex extended real function. That's very beautiful and very deep result about convergence under subdifferential sign. And normal cone, of course, it's a uh, subdifferential of the indicator function extended real value. That's what we know quite well. Then this is done. Uh, and this is indeed uh, what we need to proceed. And after that, we prove convergence of a discrete optimal solution to our given optimal solution to our given local minimizer uh, in the sweeping control problem. Again, this part also we have convergence what we need, convergence in uh, W12 in, so in the Sobolev space, strong convergence, which implies, of course, almost pointwise convergence. We can pass to the limit for original problem. But we need to think about discrete, about a joint equation, of course, because when we talk about condition, we need to consider a joint stuff. Then, of course, here uh, we need to deal with the relaxation stability. We can prove relaxation stability. No, we have such a situation. And, you know, relaxation uh, uh, stuff is related to Bogolubov, uh, uh, L.C. Young theorem. It's a well-known uh, situation. But here, although we have convex value differential inclusion, we have non-convex running cost. If you assume convexity of respect to velocity, it's fine. But we may not assume we do have relaxation stability. Again, it's no trivial fact because we don't have Lipschitz and inclusion. Because all the stuff given is much related on Lipschitz and or Kamka condition, whatever. Anyhow, that's what about FASA strategy. But I would like to be short enough to discuss the idea and then to present the result and maybe some application. Then, uh, now we fix a K and consider problem PK, our discretized problem under fixed K. And then we, as we discuss this problem, is problem of mathematical programming. Of course, in very uh, non-conventional form. And there we do have intrinsic no smoothness because we consider this normal cone mapping. And if we assume everything convex, smooth, just fine. But we have intrinsic no smooth. We need to deal. But we have variational analysis. We have generalized differentiation. We can deal. But I would like to emphasize here that here we need to use second order variation analysis. Because when we can see normal cone and on top uh, we take some kind of a joint uh, derivative or something, then we'll call derivative. Then in this case, we have non-convexity because we don't have convex graph. We have convex validness. And here is essential part of second order analysis. And even more, we have second order part Y because normal cone is subdifferential of first order. But when we, on top we take some kind of derivative, then it is second derivative, derivative of derivative. Then second uh, order analysis is very essential, in particular calculus of second order subdifferential, uh, which actually works here, then we heavily use this machinery. Uh, but again, it is, uh, you know, uh, under this, uh, you know, the scene, right? You know, so if somebody is interested, of course, everything is available and I'll be happy to discuss. Then, uh, as I mentioned, uh, here essential part is what called co-derivative there. I don't want to discuss now to define because it requires some time. But the point is that we can fully compute of this stuff. Uh, we consider our final result in terms of the initial data. Then everything like subdifferential, co-derivative, normal cone will be fully computed. And this computation is very essential to give the result. Not only to express the result, but even to proceed with uh, deriving optimality condition. Because we don't have any Lipschitz help. And that's essential part. Then when we uh, get this condition uh, for a fixed case, then pass to the limit. And pass to the limit uh, indeed involves some kind of machinery which uh, you know, we'll be happy to, uh, uh, to share with you, uh, but maybe, uh, uh, you know, uh, not in this talk. And that's the strategy. Then I pass all the stuff, all the technicalities, and let's consider the result which we can get here. Optimality condition. Then for simplicity, we assume that initial data are smooth. 
then uh, phi or phi and L, all this cost, you know, uh, terminal cost and running cost are smooth. Again, everything can be done for not smooth, but uh, no need so far. And then we have such a situation. Uh, results which we express in terms of initial data, but uh, they are complicated. We, what could we expect? We have two state constraints, two kinds of state constraints. The result is as follows. That if we have this optimal solution in some, you know, uh, uh, this intermediate sense, uh, then we assume LICQ, that we assume that at this optimal solution, uh, our uh, AIs, which actually defines this inequality state constraint by polyhedral expression, are linear independent. It's not that bad, okay? That we assume these things because it's in optimal, you know, it's, it's an AI, which is given data. Uh, in fact, can be done without, but maybe even more heavily result. Then we have the following thing. We have multiplier corresponding to cost function, uh, lambda. Uh, uh, which is of course positive, non-negative. Then we have a joint arc, a joint arc which uh, has three components, X, U, and B. Because in fact, in this formulation, X, U, and B, we treat in symmetric case. They have different expressions there, but we have this. And this guy is absolutely continuous. But then, of course, uh, we have something related to bounded variation, to measures. Then, besides this adjoint trajectory, we have some measures. One measure gamma, which actually positive barrel uh, measure corresponding to inequality constraints, and the other uh, measure is uh, just uh, measure, a regular barrel measure without any sign, without any positivity here. Then we have this collection of primary dual relationship, and it's given like that. Uh, first of all, we consider uh, this uh, eta i's. Uh, this function, which is actually in L infinity, positive function, uh, such that they uniquely exist uh, when a uh, trajectory x uh, bar is given and control is given. Then because we have LICQ, we can find this function eta i, which is non-negative and function with L infinity. We have some regularity. Then having this function, uh, we have such a relationship, first relationship uh, of this type, uh, uh, corresponding to this guy, that when we have uh, less for some t, for almost all t, we have here if a i x bar of t u bar of t less than zero, then eta i is zero, a uh, kind of complementary selectness. Uh, and then we have here uh, also another relationship involving, uh, uh, which involve uh, 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 eta uh, t, that uh, if uh, eta i of t greater than zero, that we have here uh, this equality. This relationship, again, in terms of data, we have smoothness, use derivative, uh, then uh, that's what we have. Then we have a joint equation, a joint system. And the joint system is the follows. We have another part of a joint trajectory, which are bounded variation, which is defined in terms of P of T, this absolutely continuous part. Then we have measures, that we have integral with respect to measures. And also, it is, it is for X, basically. But for U and for B, uh, because of smoothness, we have equality. If it's inequality, we have sub-differential. But if it's equality, just we have, if, if it's smooth, then we have equality here. Then we have a joint inclusion, which involves this co-derivative of normal cone mapping, which is second order sub-differential. And it is just a symbol, because this guy is computed. Then I, I, I didn't present here all the formulas, but it's given that this just a symbol. We have stuff in terms of initial data. Then, this is a joint trajectory. Uh, then, uh, we have here transversality condition. Uh, again, of, uh, we depending on x, uh, u, and uh, uh, b part is here. Then, uh, in this transversality condition, actually interrelated component here, not standard, we have also normal cone uh, to set c, but it is computed. c is uh, convex set, and we have everything in terms of initial data. And then we have non-triviality condition, uh, given like that. Then uh, we, can, we can get some condition when uh, only lambda and p are not zero, or only lambda and q is not zero. Then there are different interplay of, tri of tr non-triviality, but in general non-triviality in this case is given. And then that's the result. Then, of course, results are generally complicated, but uh, you know, this is the beauty of methods of discrete approximation. If you don't want to look at this final result, uh, just stop at any step of discretization. And say, okay, we, say we have fixed k, we have really uh, uh, convergence and estimate, then solve discrete relationship, 
and uh, that's what we can get. But mathematically, of course, we are interested in full uh, results, and full results are described here. Then there are various applications. I would like to mention only one to what's called crowd motion model, uh, which is actually an uh, interesting model, which are uh, usually related to uh, some kind of social economic modeling. And this model is as follows. Uh, we have some uh, pedestrian traffic uh, in the dynamics. There, there are some dynamics. In pedestrian traffic, then uh, there are two uh, major principles. This model is well known, not in this control. Just description, uh, this model quite well known. Then there are two principles that spontaneous velocity corresponding to uh, each individual uh, uh, will have in, uh, no, independent of uh, uh, absent of all other constraints. And the second principle, again, well understood in the motion uh, crowd motion model, uh, that sponta uh, spontaneous velocity onto the set of admissible velocity uh, should satisfy some non-overlapping condition, which again is expressed there. Okay, and then uh, this is a simple uh, figure uh, which shows that all these individuals would like to get exit in crowd, but somehow in the shortest way. And it's multi-dimension problem. Uh, then they, of course, interact somehow and, you know, crowd, you know, they use their shoulders and everything like that, but we would, would like to minimize, you know, their time to go and uh, minimize some uh, energy also. Then this problem, uh, uh, can be given as optimal control problem for the sweeping process, that we have the sweeping process like that, C is given like that, but instead of the general description, we have here uh, some relationship for this U and for B. That's the model uh, here, again, no time to describe in, in generality, and we, this overlapping condition, we minimize this kind of energy functional, uh, and uh, using this optimality condition, all of them, we can get computed optimal strategy. Of course, in this simplification of the uh, you know, uh, crowd motion model, but everything is computed and we can present optimal control and the corresponding trajectories. Okay, that's it about my talk regarding uh, reference. Uh, that's uh, Moreau uh, uh, written many papers uh, on the sweeping process and in particular his famous uh, what catching up algorithm which is beautiful result which actually also involved discrete approximation but in a very different framework about existence of solution because Moreau didn't consider any optimization and actually this is uh, his uh, very big paper like a book uh, uh, in 2002 of course you know it summarized his development uh, which uh, was given before. And then our paper uh, with this, my colleague uh, Giovanni Colombo, René Henry, and Giovanni is from Italy, University of Padova, René is from Weierstrass in Berlin, and Juan is from Chile. Uh, then this our first paper, uh, uh, which is in a dynamic system uh, uh, journal uh, about you know, some simple version. Then uh, another paper which we did uh, with the same group regarding discrete approximation but without optimality condition, only this process of discrete approximation which kind of involved. And then a paper we just submitted uh, regarding to sweeping process for polyhedral description, different kind of sweeping process. And the paper which I use in my talk, this is a paper which is preprint, not submitted yet, but it related to this uh, the play and stop operator we have. Then machinery which we use can be found in my book, uh, uh, which actually also differential inclusions are considered, but for Lipschitz in case, but uh, not all the result, uh, of course, related to the machinery, not about uh, uh, the model, but uh, if some kind of variation analysis can be found there, at least construction and some results uh, for uh, first order and for a uh, second order only preliminary result. Now it doesn't develop much. And then for crowd uh, motion model, again, there are many papers, in particular this uh, model in discrete uh, situation, uh, which uh, again given by uh, French uh, mathematician, uh, Jeanette Venel, student of Lionel Thibault uh, and Maury, I don't know. Uh, and it's published in SIM. Uh, but again, there are many, many uh, papers related to crowd motion, and if somebody is interested, there are a lot of things. And also, there are many models related to his diseases. That's uh, actually what uh, uh, Volodya, Vladimir Spakoin here or not? Okay, he's from Weiss Charles, and there are a very big group working this history, and of course, I, I hope that in Institute of Pro uh, Control Problem also there are somebody who does history, but it's kind of developed yeah. area. Yeah. Not now. 
not now. Okay, okay. That you have very interesting class of application then you know it can be covered by this model, but with control. And then we hope that uh, it can be promoted to uh, more interesting application, not uh, uh, models, but to some real problems, because we strongly believe that machinery which has been developed uh, could be useful and the statement of the problem. In fact, we got some interest of people in application, but we hope that it will go more. Okay, thank, thank you very much for your attention. Yes, that's what uh, uh, control, actually, you know, it's a very good question. Uh, what we have worked in this uh, convention series with the process, that's, you know, uh, tons of work. Uh, uh, indeed, people consider the problem of sweeping with perturbation something, with no control, nothing, nothing to optimize, and they uh, look at how... No, that I'm not familiar with. No, 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 that's what I'm not familiar with. With this kind of stuff, or with any control, in case there are some models when we have sweeping process without any control, but there are control in a joint differential equation, a, a just differential equation, that we have sweeping process as, as a, a given per se. But then there are differential equation also, which is related. And then the, uh, actually maybe the best work which has been done by Martin Bracata uh, from München. Uh, and Pavel Kresi, uh, who is from Weisrath, uh, but now in Czech. Uh, Brokate. Brokate. He is in München, in Stockholm University. And uh, Pavel Kresi, he been been at Weisrath for 15 years. Now he is director of uh, uh, Czech Republic Institute of Mathematics. So he is a very big uh, figure there. And he did have to read it. They even written a book. Then if you need more reference, uh, Sasha, I will definitely provide all the stuff. Uh, because it's indeed beautiful theory, but related to uh, indeed kind of modeling. And, uh, 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 but then also there are control, but in differential equations, recent work uh, with differential equations, that, but uh, that's what I know at least, and I hope that it is more or less a uh, uh, decent account of what uh, uh, you know, has been updated.